Well, welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. You know, there's a lot of talk about the 2024 total eclipse that will be moving across a decent portion of the United States. But another interesting eclipse will be occurring in October 2023, an annular eclipse. I thought we'd get an expert in to talk about that and overall just eclipse in general. we got Alphonse, Dr. Alphonse Sterling from NASA that's joining us. Now, Dr. Uh, Sterling, before we get too far into it, how excited are you and your colleagues at NASA about having two eclipses occur within about a six month time span? Well, it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's cool. <laughs> you know, we get excited about them too. Um, and it's kind of a mixed uh, setup because you're excited about it, but um, uh, then if you're planning to do something with it, it can also be a little bit, uh, well, you know, you're getting ready for a big event and you only have a very short amount of time to do it in. And so there's excitement, there's tension, uh, adrenaline. It's, uh, it's an interesting mixture. So people have heard of eclipses and, you know, a lot of folks get attention on the total eclipse. For folks that don't know, what exactly is an annular eclipse? Basically, an eclipse is when one celestial body falls in, into the shadow of another body. So uh, in this case, the... Uh, Earth will fall into the shadow of the moon. If that shadow, if that full shadow lands on the Earth, as it will in 2024, you will get a total eclipse because that means that if you're standing under that shadow, well, that means that the moon is blocking out the sun totally. Uh, so that's a total eclipse. But the distance between the moon and the Earth varies a little bit um, with each orbit of, of the moon. So sometimes the moon is uh, a little bit further than uh, average away from uh, the uh, Earth. When the moon is toward the far end of its orbit away from Earth and comes between the sun and the Earth, that shadow does not quite reach the Earth. So what this means is that the moon will not fully cover the sun. It will... Um, it will almost cover it, but it will leave a bright rim of the sun still visible. And so it looks like an annulus, you know, just uh, a circle, you know, just the rim of a circle. And so that's what it looks like. So it's like this bright rim uh, with the inside of the sun completely blacked out by the moon. So that is an annular eclipse. Well, during an annular eclipse, there is no time at all when it is safe to look at the sun without your protection on. You have to always do that, uh, use that protection. During a total eclipse, so in 2024, when the moon completely covers the sun, if you're in the right place, then for a, a very short amount of time, it's possible to um, uh, look at the uh, uh, outer atmosphere of the sun without uh, that protection. But uh, once that bright part of the sun comes back into view, then you have to use your protection again. I have never been in a total eclipse. I've seen partial before, but for someone that may be traveling or lucky enough to live in an area to, to see the annular eclipse and the total eclipse, what, what does it look like and everything and the kind of the change in the environment when those two eclipses uh, happen? During an annular eclipse, uh, the moon does again not cover the entire sun so um, it really does not get too dark. It gets uh, quite, it, it, gets, it gets a hazy type of, um, well, it's an eerie glow actually, but it's still quite bright. Uh, you, you know, you can still uh, uh, comfort, comfortably walk around and, and see things. It doesn't get dark because the, uh, just a little sliver of the sun, if just a little sliver of the sun uh, the bright part of the sun is still uncovered, then um, it's still extremely bright. And that's, again, why I'm emphasizing that if you're looking at it, you have to wait until the moon completely covers it during the total one. So um, when it's the annular eclipse, you'll see the um, moon progressively take chunks out of the sun um, over about an hour or so. And then the uh, last part of the moon will finally slip over into the sun and you'll have that that bright ring and then it walks out the other side uh and, and that's it now let's go to the total eclipse during this it, it's it's uh, 
dramatically uh, different, actually, even from an angular eclipse, uh, the total eclipse is. Um, so you begin in the same way. The moon is taking chunks and chunks out of the uh, full disk of the sun, but then uh, the moon will cover the last bit of uh, the bright sun. And uh, during this last bit, you can uh, get some phenomena. With your eclipse glasses, you can see just the broken up limb of the sun, uh, that the little bit that's not yet uh, covered up. And that's, you know, it's broken up because a little bit of the sun is shining through just, um, you know, a few uh, valleys along the uh, moon's limb uh, edge. And uh, those are called Bailey beads. Um, and then after that, uh, uh, the moon will continue to move over the uh, the disk of the sun. And uh, these Bailey beads will only be there a few seconds before there's just one left. And uh, that can be just a... a like a, a very bright final light of the sun shining through some uh, deep valleys in the moon, uh, along the edge of the moon. And uh, around the rim, you see, uh, you can start to see the glow of the uh, outer atmosphere of the sun called the corona. And uh, that is called the diamond ring effect because it looks like that last bit of light that's shining through the valleys is like a diamond and the uh, rest of the uh, um, surrounding uh, faintly glowing atmospheres like the ring. But then the, um, for the next uh, uh, three or four minutes, depending where you're at, the moon will completely cover the bright part of the sun. And then it's, it's, uh, it's just incredibly dramatic if you're, um, uh, I, I think if you're a human being, <laughs> and, and if you're even an animal, apparently, because animals actually react to it too, because they aren't expecting it to get night and to get night that rapidly and at that time of the day. But uh, for us humans, you can see the a part of the sun that you do not ever see in your normal life. See, the sun, I, I talk about the sun as if it's just this uh, uh, yellow, whitish globe that we uh, know is hanging there in the sky. Actually, that's only part of the sun. The sun actually has uh, an atmosphere, or actually, we like to say it has several atmospheres. Um, and uh, this is one of the things that I study. For a long time, uh, humans didn't realize that the sun had an atmosphere um, until they notice this bizarre thing in eclipses because when that bright part of the sun is covered you get this this really fantastic pearly white glow around the uh eclipsed sun and that's the outer outer atmosphere of the sun called the corona uh from the word crown it's like a crown around the sun and um uh, that corona has a different shape for uh, every eclipse. So if you've seen one before, it'll look different this time. Um, but uh, even me as a solar astronomer, um, you know, having studied the corona for uh, years and years, when I saw it, I mean, I, I was just uh, uh, blown away. <laughs> it, was just, it was just amazing. How much do you recommend that if the eclipse is near you to try to get to where you can can witness the the, the total eclipse in April? I would definitely say that um, um, you know if you if you have any chance, and I would really uh, recommend that you do everything you can to get into the shadow of the total eclipse uh, in particular. Um, you know, if you see the angular, it's still with the glasses. It's going to be an unusual phenomena, but. Um, I would say that that experience also will just pale compared to seeing totality. And seeing it partial, seeing 98% or 99% is not, there's a huge, huge jump over that last uh, two or 1%. Um, it's just a uh, site that uh, you won't see again. It's, it's like an odd type of uh, twilight that comes about uh, during totality. And it's a sort of um, uh, thing that you won't, 
unless you really work at it, you will very likely not see it again. Um, you know, unless you actually make an effort to travel to see it. Um, and I think it's something that you'll tell uh, family members uh, for generations about. So I would definitely say they should uh, try and do that. So Dr. Sterling, I appreciate you taking some time to talk with us about this. Again, I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm a space nerd myself, so it's really cool that a lot of people are gaining more interest and knowledge about uh, space in general with this, these eclipses coming up. Yes, yes.